Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to study cleft lip and palate. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook for daily image based questions and revision of few important concepts. And to get a free PDF of this video, you can follow my channel on Telegram as well. Please like, comment and subscribe my video. So cleft, cleft is a breach in the continuity. Here you can see this is the cleft involving both the hard palate and the soft palate area. This is the cleft. And in the second image, as you can see, this is the cleft involving soft palate. As it is not very clearly evident in the image, but clefts can be of hard palate, soft palate, alveolus or lip. It could be unilateral or bilateral as well. It could be a complete cleft or a partial cleft. We are going to study cleft lip and palate under following headings. Incidence, etiology, hereditary and genetic predisposition, congenital, embryological background and theories of cleft lip and palate. This is very important topic considering your MCQs, classification, problems associated with cleft and the management part. Coming to the incidence, here three things are important for us. Incidence of cleft lip and or cleft palate per thousand life births. It is least seen in negroids. Least seen in negroids. Most commonly seen in Afghans. Highest incidence is among Afghans and least among negroids. And in Indians, it is 1.7 per thousand life births. Important points regarding incidence. Unilateral clefts are seen in 80% of the cases, bilateral cleft in 20%. Among the unilateral cleft, cleft involving left side are more common. Clefts are common in male than female. In Afghans and Mongoloids, cleft cases are the most. Now to remember it easily, you can remember this one line. Men are not always right. Okay, so whenever, if at all, MCQ comes, then uh, you should not get confused between male and female and left and right. Because at that time, you will be having lot of things running into your mind. Okay, so just remember this. Male are not always right. So it is common in male and they are not right. That's why it is seen on left side. Etiology, it could be congenital or hereditary. For a disease to be congenital, it has to be present by birth. And in hereditary, it may or may not present since birth. But in the cleft cases, the etiology is multifactorial. Apart from hereditary or a congenital cause, there are many other causes which also affects the development of clefts in a baby. Hereditary with superimposed environmental factor is considered to be the most probable etiologic factor for cleft formation. Cleft cases are divided into two. Syndromic cleft and non-syndromic cleft. Syndromic cleft cases are very very important for us. Okay, I have classified them under autosomal dominant, recessive, X-link dominant, recessive and non-Mendelian. But as of now, you just have to remember the names of it. Which are the syndromes which have cleft lip and palate as their feature. In the Van der Wood syndrome. Here you can see the unilateral cleft involving the lip as well as palate. Orofacio digital syndrome. Here you can see the deformity of digits as well as the nasomaxillary complex. Cleft can also occur in this. These are the few more examples. Now do you remember what is trisomy 13 and trisomy 18? Trisomy 18 is Edwards syndrome and trisomy 13 is Patau syndrome. Remember this. Coming to congenital, infections, drugs, radiation and diets. All these are the causes for clefts to occur 
from the birth that is congenitally which are the infections this is important rubella influenza toxoplasmosis like infections during the first month of pregnancy can lead to clefts theories of cleft lip and palate now this is the most important part considering your mcqs i request you all to clear this thing right now there should be no confusion in this okay medio nasal process the skin color portion is your medio nasal process lateral nasal processes this pink colored portion is developed from lateral nasal process green colored portion is your maxillary process okay blue portion is developed by mandibular process which is not important considering the cleft lip and palate but just for your information now in the bilateral cleft lip there is a non fusion between what medio nasal process the skin portion and the green part which is maxillary process oblique facial cleft this question has been asked in uh, neat 2018 i guess oblique facial cleft is formed by non fusion of maxillary process and lateral nasal process just remember this picture very clearly in your mind and you will be able to solve this mcqs very easily i have given few equations to simplify things cleft lip is non fusion of medio nasal process and maxillary process as we have seen cleft of alveolus alveolus is the area where your maxillary teeth are present on so it is the non fusion of fronto nasal process and maxillary process fronto nasal process medio nasal process and lateral nasal process they develop from fronto nasal process okay just remember this going forward complete cleft palate develops due to non fusion of maxillary process during eighth week of intrauterine life this timing is important for us it is the eighth week of intrauterine life when two palatal shelves fuses so if non fusion occurs there would be a complete cleft palate oblique facial cleft as we have seen it is non fusion of lateral nasal process to maxillary process important event for clefts to occur is the fusion of palatal shelves with fronto nasal process at 6th and 7th week of intrauterine life two palatal shelves fuses at 8th week and palatal shelves fuses with fronto nasal process at 6th and 7th week of intrauterine life that is first fusion of palatal shelves with fronto nasal process occurs and then they fuses with each other what is a fronto nasal process as i said it is the mother of medio nasal and lateral nasal fronto nasal process develops earlier in the life and from it medio and lateral nasal process develop now the classification anatomical classification is very easy and no questions are asked from this it is very simple like it's a cleft of uh, lip and alveolus with normal palate or isolated cleft of hard and soft palate with normal lip and alveolus cleft of the soft palate in uvula cleft of the uvula or it could be a complete unilateral cleft lip and palate or complete bilateral cleft lip and palate it could be symmetrical or asymmetrical so these are the different variations in which clefts can occur basically where there will be a non fusion there will be a cleft now views classification and kanhans classification are important for you in the views classification we'll start from backward to forward okay views classification first is cleft of soft palate then coming forward cleft involving hard and soft palate both but up to the incisive foramen only third complete unilateral cleft of soft and hard palate lip and alveolar 
means it is a complete unilateral cleft and fourth is complete bilateral cleft involving all the four structures. Another classification is Kanhan's strip device classification which is uh, very important in image based questions as well. Here in the image you can see it is a diagram just like our impression tray but it is not an impression tray of course. Here you can see right and left and uh, different segments are drawn okay. So here this circle is our incisive foramen and it is also our key to understand this diagram nicely. Now 7 and 8 what it could be what is behind the incisive foramen it's the hard palate right the soft palate. In front of the incisive foramen what is it 3 and 6 is? Hard palate anterior to the incisive foramen. 2 and 5 alveolus and block 1 and 4 is lip. Now moving forward dental problems associated with cleft lip and palate. There are psychological problems obviously to the child as well as to parents. Dental problems this is important for us. Multiple missing teeth are seen mobile premaxilla, anterior and posterior cross bites, ectopically erupting teeth, impacted teeth, supernumeraries and poor al alignment of the teeth which will lead to poor oral hygiene and decaying of the teeth and then it will lead to perio complications. Aesthetic problem and speech and hearing problem as well. Okay, you can see the teeth here in cross bite. Okay, malalignment of the teeth is also seen. Ectopically erupted teeth, crowding, which will lead to poor oral hygiene and caries and periodontal problems as well. Here, what do what you can see over here? This is the class three skeletal profile. Okay, it is seen in cleft patients. Now management. Management is done in four different stages. First is pre-surgical orthopedics. It is done from birth to 24 months. Okay. And this is a very crucial period in treating a cleft patient. What are the aim in this first stages? To facilitate feeding, to establish normal tongue posture, to stimulate the palatal growth, and to reduce the chances of ear infection as there is a breach between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity we need to facilitate feeding right so this is the appliance called obturator it is made up of either cold cure or heat cure and these are its wings which are attached outside on the cheeks so this is the image of obturator here in the image A, you can see the bilateral cleft, yes, bilateral cleft and displaced premaxilla. This cone shape is a premaxilla and it is readapted in the second image. Okay, this is the aim to treat cleft patient in uh, stage 1. So, it is a premaxilla is readapted with the maxilla as you can see over here. And in the image B, you can see the unilateral cleft and it is also displaced. So here we have decreased the distance and uh, readapted it. In this picture, you can see the pinama plants. Okay, the full form of pinama plants is nasoalveolar molding appliance. Lip closure. First we will see the image, here you can see this, It is this procedure is called the lip tapping. For the lip closure we have famous Millard's rule of 10, right? So it has three criteria. at the age of 10 weeks, you have to do lip closure at the age of 10 weeks and the weight of the child should be 10 pounds and hemoglobin level should be 10 gram per cent, then and then you should do lip closure. And the flap which are used are Tennyson triangular flap and Millard's rotation flap. 
Palatal closure is recommended between the age of 12 to 24 months. And the flap used are one Langenbach's pattern palatoplasty. Going forward to stage 2, it is from 24 months to 6 years. Here, cross bites, if uh, obviously cross bites are present, so cross bites are treated with uh, removable or fixed appliances. And maxillary protraction devices are used to correct the class 3 profile. Fixed orthodontic treatment can be initiated. Now this is the important MCQ for you. Secondary alveolar bone graft. Okay, Primary bone grafting is done when the child is very small. And then the secondary alveolar grafting is done at 9 to 11 years of age. In the palatal region before eruption of the permanent maxillary canine because our aim is to erupt the canine through the flap okay we want the canine to erupt through the graft now here in the picture you can see the night eye expander okay this appliance is night eye expander can you see the constricted maxillary arches and in this diagram the arch has expanded. Here they have used quad helix appliance for arch expansion. This is the constricted maxillary arch and by the use of quad helix the arch has expanded. Here you can clearly see the class 3 profile in this girl and we have used this appliance. It is called face mask or reverse pull headgear. What does it do? It stops the growth of mandible. Okay, We are applying the pressure over the mandible. So, so we don't want mandible to grow forward but we are keeping the maxilla portion open because we want the maxilla to grow forward. Can you recall the major disadvantages of reverse pull headgear? Please reply me in the comment section below. Stage 4 is the permanent dentition and final correction stage. Here we plan the retention which is a permanent in nature. So guys, I hope this video was informative and useful for you. Stay tuned and read well.